Chest and shoulders are an important part of the elite physique. It kind of finishes everything off. You're gonna build those nice round shoulder caps. You're going to have the appearance of a smaller waist, uh, a nice chest. We work back hard, it's time to work chest hard. Creating that balance and that flow and that symmetry is so important. Technically, these are our second shoulder workout of the week. So why do shoulders come up twice in the week as opposed to just training at once? Well, shoulders provide this beautiful cap and are the beginning of the V taper itself. Now, one of the things we know is that training frequency is actually one of the biggest tools to developing a muscle group. So if you notice with Erin, she has tremendous shoulders. One of the reasons for this is because her training frequency on shoulders is actually higher. Today's workout will have three supersets followed by one finishing move for upper chest. And again, you'll take about 45 seconds to a minute in between. We'll do four sets of eight on the first superset and then the rest of them will be three sets. This is the last weight workout that you'll be doing this week. So let's hit it hard. There are a number of methods and training philosophies that Aaron has put together for this workout today. And the first is really unique. What you'll notice is that instead of supersetting the same body part, today Aaron is supersetting body parts that have similar functions. So that both the chest and the shoulders actually work at the arm. And so much of what you do when you're training the shoulders or when you're training the chest is gonna call both muscle groups into play. And so naturally, you would wanna superset them. So the chest is actually called the pectoralis major. And what the chest is is a fan-shaped muscle group that essentially originates along the sternum and the clavicles and then inserts on the arm. So it's gonna work along the arm. And if you look at the direction of the fibers, it's gonna pull the arms in as if you're giving someone a big hug. And so essentially any flying movement is gonna target the chest and any pressing movement that's bringing your arms across your body is also gonna target the pectoralis. The chest is huge for an elite physique and that it gives you the development on the whole front aspect of the body. But in addition to that, it plays such a functional role in any pushing motion and any striking motion that you're actually gonna perform. The chest is gonna be involved. For the elite body trainer, it's important to warm up for five or 10 minutes. You'll see I've been doing jump rope or the bike because this is what we have available at the gym. Whether it's treadmill, stair climber, elliptical, jumping rope, bike, whatever method gets you warmed up. So just like any other body part, it's important to start with the general warm up, which is exactly what Erin's doing when she's training her shoulders. Remember, the shoulders are very susceptible to injury. And so it's critical to spend a lot of time warming up to prepare you for the movement. For chest and shoulders, I like to focus on specific exercises, but I also like to think about how I want my body to look and then also the strength aspect of it all. I wanna to try to push as hard as I can and lift as much weight as I can. So it's aesthetics and function again. The first two exercises that we'll be performing today are flat dumbbell bench and seated military press. You can do a warm up set if you'd like, but I feel nice and warm, so I'm just gonna go right into it. It'll take about 45 seconds to a minute in between sets. For the bench, you wanna make sure you keep your back flat against the bench, and you wanna focus on lifting with just your chest. And of course, push evenly with both sides. Watch your wrists, make sure they're nice and straight. And you don't want to let one arm dip below the other, and you're gonna bring the dumbbells to about chest height. Both of these are compound movements, and so they're gonna be taxing again to your muscles, but also to your core, your central nervous system, as well as your cardiovascular system. For the military press, you wanna make sure that your entire body is at a 180 degree angle. And you don't wanna come down too low with dumbbells, but you wanna come down low enough to get full range of motion. And then pause at the top, pause at the bottom.
For these two exercises, chest should be a little bit stronger than shoulders, so I've picked a heavier weight for chest and a lighter weight for shoulders. When we look at the repetition range that Aaron selects out, one thing I want to point out is that Aaron is selecting a heavier repetition range. So last time in the shoulders and arm workout, when she trained her shoulders, much of her repetitions was in a 10 or greater range, but now she's training heavy in eight repetition range. This is because Aaron is using what is known as periodization. So what is periodization? It's the present and the future of bodybuilding and sport. It's programmed variation. And it says that we have different muscle fibers in our muscle groups and that in order to target them, you wanna use different repetition ranges. Also remember, you're not born knowing how to recruit the larger muscle fibers. You have to train your nervous system to do that. And how do you do that? You train with heavier weights. The next two exercises we'll be performing are incline dumbbell flies followed by incline front raises with dumbbells. We'll be doing three sets of 10, taking about 45 seconds to a minute in between. For the incline dumbbell flies, I like to picture myself hugging a barrel. So your arms are not going to be straight out. Your elbows will be flexed a little bit and you wanna bring your upper arms to about 180 degrees and just sort of pause at the top and really focus on squeezing the chest muscles. For the front raises, you wanna focus on keeping your palms down and pull, pulling evenly with both sides and make sure you get your full range of motion. And this is a great exercise to peek down and see the muscle working. So here's an opportunity to work on your mind-muscle connection. These next two exercises are more for aesthetics. It, they're isolation exercises. I like to focus more on upper chest, especially for the ladies because um, we don't focus on this enough. And for men too, because they do a lot of regular flat bench and this part of the chest is neglected. The first isolation movement that she's gonna use in this next superset is incline dumbbell flies. And this by virtue works the chest ideally because remember, the chest, you have a hugging motion that's gonna directly target this muscle right here. And so after doing that, well guess what front raises do? They finish off the front of the shoulders because remember, their job is to raise the arm upward. So why is she using a bench in this case? Because it eliminates the use of momentum with your trunk. And so by using a bench, you're able to focus purely on moving that weight with the anterior head of the shoulders as opposed to using momentum. For the next exercises, we'll be doing incline dumbbell bench followed by standing lateral raises. We'll be doing three sets of 10 and taking about 45 seconds to a minute in between sets. For the incline dumbbell bench, it's important to bring the dumbbells to about chest height and pause at the bottom and really control the dumbbells. Keep those wrists nice and straight and keep your back flat on the bench. This is an absolutely perfect superset, and I'll tell you why. Because incline bench first targets the upper chest, but in addition it targets the front deltoids, so the front of your shoulders. So you're working the chest, you're targeting the front of the shoulders, and you've pre-fatigued them. But standing lateral raises are gonna target that cap on the deltoid. So it's perfect to isolate that cap, to create a mind-muscle connection with those side deltoids, and again, to work on the beginning of that V taper. And for the standing lateral raises, as with any standing exercise, make sure you don't bounce as the reps wear on and you get a little bit tired. So maintain that proper range of motion and, and good form. 
At this point in the workout, after performing those compound movements with very short rest periods, the user is gonna be taxed both cardiovascularly as well as in their muscles, they're gonna feel a large amount of lactate buildup. And most people are not used to training the chest and shoulders at the same time. This means that their shoulders are gonna feel very fatigued even comparison to the first workout. There'll be a lot of burning sensation, which is that lactic acid buildup. There'll be a lot of blood pulling in the muscles. But what again, one thing we know, and you wanna remind yourself, is that's important for fully developing the muscle itself. You can either use a mirror or not, and I have mixed emotions about it. The mirror, of course, you can check your form, but I think not using a mirror really helps focus that connection between the mind and the muscle because you don't have something to check um, and you really have to think about your body and kind of just focus within. So um, it's kind of up in the air. I've, I've been to gyms that have mirrors and gyms that don't and I tend to have a better workout when I can't see myself. The last exercise is bodyweight decline push-ups. I like finishing with this because you'll do three by as many reps as you can do. It's important to keep a tight core. You'll be really recruiting that and upper chest. Really push yourself, keep those hips at a level height, don't let them dip. Take about 45 seconds to a minute in between each one. This last exercise is a burnout, and then it's also a way to challenge your mental toughness. You'll wanna quit after two or three because you'll be fatigued from the previous exercises just push through and take that 45 seconds to a minute, regroup your thoughts, and hit it hard again. It's fine if you can only get two or three. It's fine if you can only get one. If that's the case, I would suggest just moving to the floor and doing standard push-ups, or even push-ups on your knees. So there's always a starting point, and there's always a way to make the exercise harder. This is challenging because it's going to target the upper chest, and we've already hit the upper chest pretty hard. I, I feel like it recruits more core and it adds a stabilization element to the exercise. This is the last weight training workout of the week. Tomorrow will be high intensity interval training followed by a day off, and then we'll start the week over with shoulders and arms. Remember, bodybuilding, figure training, training in general is not just in the weight room itself, but it's a lifestyle and that includes proper nutrition and proper supplementation. We know that by optimizing these other areas that you're gonna get more benefits from the workout itself. So when you leave the gym today, don't just think about, oh, I'm done for the day. No, that's when it just begins. That's when repair mode just begins and that is very important to focus on nutrition as well as your supplementation. At the end of each week, it's important to track your progress. Make sure you take measurements, progress pictures, and check in on body space, see how others are doing for motivation. Put away the scale, perform each rep, each set with excellence. Earn your elite.